Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of JSF Made Easy. I'm also the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com, so come over there and check out some of the great content we've got. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you today about was creating dynamic JSF applications. Right now I've put together a little JSF application that really doesn't do too much. It is uh, a nice little internationalized application that says hello world and I don't know kind of prints out a link by using resource bundles and some property files that I've got there in the old classes directory. But I want to take things to the next level and really create a, a bit of an interactive application. Uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to actually create an application that plays the old rock, paper, scissors game. And if you're not familiar with rock, paper, scissors, you can head over to the Wikipedia and find out all about it. Um, but I wanted to create a little application that basically looked like this. Somebody types in the appropriate URL, a page comes up with a text field, a couple of checkboxes, they can type in rock, paper, or scissors, and if they do, well, we'll indicate whether the game was a win, whether the game was a loss, whether the game was a tie, something like that. Basically make it interactive, where somebody's typing something in and the server is responding to what was typed in. Now, by the way, we're going to keep this fairly simple. Um, on the server side, I'm always going to click rock, just kind of like Kramer plays uh, every time in Seinfeld. And so the result will be based on the server clicking rock. The client can type in whatever the heck they want. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a Java bean. Uh, Java beans are where our business logic is. And I'm going to create a Java bean called the game bean. It's going to be in the com dot mckenzie.jsf package and it's going to have a, a couple of instance variables one is going to be called the computer gesture which will represent what the computer has chosen one will be the client gesture which represents what the client has chosen and then from that information we'll I don't know, execute some game logic figure out what the results are and basically get this application going so the first thing I need to do is I need to create my package structure I'm going to have a, a full uh, com dot mckenzie mcnz dot jsf folder structure and inside that jsf folder I'm going to create a new java bean called the game bean dot java now one thing you should note I'm actually putting my source code inside this classes directory I'll then compile it which will then put a dot class file in here as well if you're using a handsome IDE like uh, Eclipse or NetBeans or IntelliJ or something like that you've probably got a source folder uh, I can't afford those types of gadgets so I gotta use the command prompt so I put my source code and my compiled code all in the same location now as far as this particular class goes well I want to start off by at the very least putting in our class name and, and package declaration. So there's our package declaration. There's our class name as well. I'm going to save that. Uh, I'm going to save it right now because I've got very little in here that's going to cause me any problems. With that saved, I'm actually going to go over to a command prompt, move to the classes directory. So there's EasyJSF, WebINF, classes, and I'm going to compile my code. And I do that by calling the Java C, Java compiler, which is in my JDK bin directory. I'm going to specify a few things on my class path, namely the lib directory, which has my JSF implementation files. That's of my uh, Tomcat full of my EasyJSF application. There's the WebINF lib directory. I'm also going to access anything in the lib directory of Tomcat there. That might be handsome and needed. And I'm going to compile all of the files that end in .java inside that column slash McKenzie slash JSF folder. Again, make sure you're in the classes directory when you run that. But I can run that, and of course that just runs fine. You see the dot class file has now been created. That means it's time to move on and start adding in some of my private instance variables. So I'm going to throw a couple of private instance variables in there. Even going to take the old public setters and getters that I've already coded out for myself here. That's just standard fare, you know. So we want to have something that represents the computer gesture. The computer's always going to pick rock for now. Something that represents the client gesture. And then you need the requisite setters and getters, of course, as well. And again, anytime you make a little move, it's always nice to compile it. So there we go. We've got no errors so far. Uh, also, what we don't have is we don't have any action methods. And when somebody clicks a button on a JSF application, you want to call an action method. And the action method is sort of where 
don't know, it's usually where your business logic goes. And so here, when our game plays, the thing that we need to do is we got the client gesture. We need to figure out what the server's gesture is going to be. And so in my application, what I do is I actually just have this nice little execute game logic method, which implements the business logic, which is real super simple right now. I and mean, we're keeping things real easy. And basically what we do in our business logic is we, well, we just assign the computer gesture property to rock. We always choose rock. One thing to notice, anytime you got an action method, it always takes an action event object as an argument. We've got that coded right in there. We've even got a little reset button, which just resets the values of the client gesture and the server gesture. And as you can see, it also takes an action event, just assigns the computer gesture and client gesture to null. That looks good. Again, I'm going to compile that because I like to compile every time I take a step. I don't like having to troubleshoot hundreds of lines of code. And then finally, the last thing I need is when our game plays, well, we actually want to display the result. And uh, we don't want to display the result if there's been no gameplay or if things are null or something like that. But if someone's played and typed something in here, we and click the play button, well, we're going to be polite and, and tell them whether it was a win, a loss, or, or an error. And so I've got some hacked out code to, to do just that. I'll code all that up into a, a little method I call get result. It looks like it's just a, a property method, but in fact, it actually does some calculations on the fly. But it behaves like a, a regular getter method for a property that exists, although there is no actual instance variable named result. And here you can see in the method, basically what we do is we, uh, we create a little temporary variable named result, which we assign to null. We then say, hey, if the uh, client gesture is not null, and the client gesture is not null if somebody's actually played the game, because as I said, what somebody types in there ends up getting mapped to that client gesture property up here. And so basically, if that client gesture is not null, if the game has been played, let's figure out what we should display to the user. So we'll start off by saying, look, if things don't work, it's going to be an error. So we'll just assign error right off the bat. Maybe it's a little pessimistic, but you know that's just sort of my personality. Uh, and then what do we do? Well, we say, if the client gesture is paper, well, the result is a win. That's that string right there. That's the result. Now, how can we say that? Well, remember, I'm always choosing rock. I'm kind of cheating here. I'm not taking care of the different paper, scissor options. I want to keep this simple. I don't want to be, you know, writing some huge Riot Games application here. This is going to be simple. If so, if the client types in paper, it's a win. If the client types in scissors, it's a loss. If the client types in rock, it's a draw. And if the client types in senior X stop lapa kettle, well, there's going to be an error and one of those four strings is going to come back to the user. Now note if the client gesture is null then the result is null and null gets sent back to the user. If null gets sent back to the user nothing appears because well JSF smart enough that when there's a null it doesn't display it. Well, at least it tries not to anyways. And so that's basically my Java bean well, in a nutshell there. Let me see if I can compile it. It compiles, but you know what? It actually wouldn't work right now the way I want it to because, well, this is going to be a managed bean that I'm going to throw in the request scope, and I haven't indicated that this is a managed bean. Back in JSF 1.2, if we had a managed bean, we'd kind of create a whole bunch of stuff in our faces config.xml file, and we'd say, hey, we've got this managed bean, it's Kyle McKenzie game bean, I want to have the name game bean with a lowercase letter g when it runs, put it in the request scope. We don't have to actually do that anymore. We can. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. Um, and there's actually some compelling reasons why you might want to do that. Um, but to make life easier, one of the things that we can use in our JSF applications are these JSF annotations. And these JSF annotations come from this javax.faces.bean package. And we say, hey, this is a managed bean, and it's going to be request scoped. And if we do that, um, the JSF framework will manage our bean. The JSF framework will actually know how, by the XHTML page we're about to create, to map that property, client gesture there, to what actually somebody typed in right there. And it'll know what scope to actually put this bean in as well. So anyways, that was my last little change there. I think I've got to my game bean class. I'm going to compile, and everything looks like it compiled nice and successfully. The last thing I need to do is, uh, well, actually figure out how to create that JSP that's got the input text field, a couple of buttons, some 
prompted text to the, the client. Also notice that the URL is going to be index.faces. That means that, well, I'm probably going to need a file inside of my inside of the root of my application named index.xhtml. 